So in this video, we're going to be looking at the Waves Abbey Road Studio 3 plugin. And before we get started, I just want to mention that if you want to get the most out of this video, you should be wearing a set of headphones. Uh, if you're listening on speakers or a laptop speaker or something, then please switch to headphones because otherwise you're not going to get the true benefits of what this thing does. Okay, another thing is that I'm going to be going over what the problem with just mixing on headphones is and, you know, some of the reasons why I've made this video in the first place. So if all you wanted to do was know what all the dials do and how to operate it and what it does, then I've put some handy timestamps in the description of this video. So let's get started. Whenever I'm interested in a new plugin or a product, I'll often go to Facebook groups or internet forums to find out what people are saying about it. And my results from doing that actually triggered me making this video because I found loads of people that were either very cynical, skeptical, or were even bashing it without even having tried it. And I happened to go to the marketing event that Waves put on in Studio 3 on the day that this was launched. And we had the chance to listen to the creators of the plugin and hear what they had to say about what the purpose of it was. And also got the chance to listen to the plugin with headphones on, um, listening to various musical loops. And then come into the control room and listen to those same loops through the different monitoring environments. So the different sets of speakers and in different positions in the room. And I must say that Waves have done a really, really good job in modeling the environment and I could hear the similarities between the two. Um, obviously, uh, without mixing through something in full, I wouldn't get the idea about quite how close it is exactly. But I, when I listened to it, I thought, oh, this sounds incredibly close. So good enough. Um, but that on its own wouldn't make a very good sellable product there has to be a purpose or a greater reason for people to use it. And I think that this is where people are getting confused and kind of uh, becoming very cynical about it. Is they're thinking, oh, it's just another way to kind of sell the Abbey Road Studios name and it's just another thing that Waves can kind of bring out. And they're not understanding the greater purpose behind it just partly because of the marketing branding of it. And this is a big mistake because I think that this will be useful to a lot of people. So to understand why mixing on headphones is difficult, we need to understand what happens to sound in a real room environment. So in a real room, sound bounces around the room boundaries or any physical objects in that room. So when a sound leaves a speaker, it doesn't just go to the listening position, it just bounces around everywhere and those reflections can kind of color the, um, the listening position, okay? On headphones, that doesn't happen. The sound is literally directly uh, coming out of the speakers and into your eardrums. And unless you're um, listening very, very loud with open back headphones, the chances are you're getting absolutely zero reflections from the acoustic environment, okay? So that's one problem. So we're used to time and time again, hearing out of speakers and hearing that color of the room. And without hearing that color of the room, some things can sound very unnatural. OK, and the acoustic environment has to sound good. And a lot of people have acoustic environments uh, that they put speakers in that are suboptimal. And a bad environment is going to really impact the decisions that you make while you're mixing. So if you don't feel like you can trust your uh, monitors and your um, room treatment, it's very, very difficult to mix. So a control room like Abbey Road Studio 3 is going to have a very low overall reverb time. So this is going to be in the region of, you know, 0.2 to 3 seconds. And this reverb time is also going to be as flat across all frequencies as possible, meaning that certain frequencies aren't going to ring on for longer than others. They're all going to be within the ballpark of each other. And again, in less well-treated rooms, this is not the case. You'll usually find that particularly bass frequencies will ring out for a lot longer than the higher frequencies, and that can become a problem. Okay, so the first advantage of the Abbey Road Studio 3 plugin is it kind of gives you some sort of overall fake room ambience and a room ambience that is like the control room to Studio 3. Another common problem with headphone mixing and perhaps to me 
the more important problem to solve is crosstalk between your ears. Okay, and let me just describe what this is. So when you're wearing a set of headphones, if something is panned so that it only comes out of the one speaker, so let's say the left speaker, that means it's only going to be coming into one of your ears. Okay, but when you're listening on speakers, that's not the case. So when the sound will come out of the left speaker, it will arrive at the left ear first because a physical distance, okay, isn't as far but it will also still arrive to the right speaker. But the tonality of that and the overall level of it, as well as the timing, will change because it almost has to go through your face or around your face to be able to hear it. But it's not completely isolated. You will still get some sound coming to the other ear and the same um, from the other side. So these are kind of very very important properties about when you put speakers in a room one side is not completely isolated to the other side okay so headphones can feel very very unnatural so before we get into what all the controls do let's simply listen to this in bypass and then turned on and it's in the default state when uh, I first loaded this up so one thing that I do want to mention at this point is that this plugin is purely for referencing. When you bounce your track out of your DAW, you want to make sure that this is inactive. Okay, and that's because this is just purely for listening to the color of the sonic environment. It's not there to actually make your recording sound like Abbey Road. Okay, that's a really important distinction. It's something that some people were getting wrong on the forums. And just make sure that you're aware that this is just to help you better judge the decisions that you're making with headphones on. Okay, so let's have a listen. And by the way, this track that I've chosen was mixed completely with headphones on and without this plugin. So what I'm hoping is going to happen is when I play it, I'm going to hear some things that are wrong or um, inaccurate when I'm turning it on. And this would be like as if I'd referenced on speakers and I was fixing some problems. So when the plugin was turned on, I heard all of this extra ambience and it really brought to light some of my reverb choices and whether they were actually the best choices for what I needed. And I found this particularly um, stark on the lead vocal and I, there's quite a few things I would like to change about that. The other thing that I heard was the way that it became much punchier. There was a lot more low end weight and a better central image. So this is down to, again, this kind of crosstalk of being able to um, have the blend of sound hitting both sides of the headphones. And that's something that you typically wouldn't get. Um, so I felt like the things in the center became way more prominent. They became way more solid and punchy. And I had a better idea to judge the low end instruments. So that's like the kick drum and the, uh, the bass guitar there. And, you know, that's something that I really hated about headphones. And it's one of the reasons why I've never, ever, ever enjoyed mixing on headphones is that I felt like I could never really get the reverbs or the bottom end right. And this kind of seems to be doing the things I expect a room to do. So um, this would be really good for um, people that have either a rubbish acoustic environment to begin with and they feel like they can't trust their room or also people that only have the choice of headphones. I know lots of uh, DJs that are constantly on the road traveling and always writing songs. And how good would it be to use something like this so that they felt more at home and were making better decisions, okay? Uh, and that means that they could kind of mix in hotel rooms or backstage or in various different environments that they wouldn't possibly have been able to before. 
And, you know, I would love to just go on holiday and still be able to do a a couple of mixes and take more time off or do more traveling. And this is a plugin that might actually allow me to do that to some degree. And obviously, um, this isn't going to replace speakers. When I'm at my studio, I still feel like I'm going to prefer using the real speakers, but it's just another tool in your referencing arsenal. So I think that this could be a bit of a game changer for me because it means that I can do more away from the studio, take more time off and then just kind of finalize stuff when I come back. So again, I could find use even though uh, I have a studio where I trust the environment a bit more. Okay, so before we go into um, changing anything on this mix, let's just go through all of the controls. So up here in the um, this box here we've got three choices of studio monitors so the near fields are these um, ATC near field speakers okay so these are going to have a flatter overall kind of sound to them they're not going to be quite as big and punchy as some of the bigger speakers um, these ATCs have a fairly large range about them, but some near fields will roll off bottom end. So what you'd be expecting from near fields is them to not have that kind of lowest kind of frequency range in there. Then you've got the mid fields, which are these uh, B&W speakers here. And these are, you know, um, more full range than the near fields, but they're not the kind of uh, biggest full range punchiest speakers that you'd have. And then finally, you've got the FARs, which are the kind of main studio monitors that these are kind of soffit mounted into the actual walls of the studio. And these are some quested speakers. So um, these are going to be the punchiest. They're going to extend to the lowest. And they're generally just going to have like even more of that low end energy. So let's just quickly flick between the three types of speakers and hear how the sound changes. So the impression that I'm getting from the three of these is the near fields is definitely the most like mid range forward. And I'm not talking about the 200 hertz type of mid range. I'm talking about like 500 to 1K mid range, the real like meat of the sound. Uh, and then the kind of mid fields have more of that lower body descending a bit lower. So 200 and kind of below. Um, and then the kind of fars, the mains, they had this ultra low punch that the others didn't have, but also had this like bright top end that the BNWs didn't have as well. So you kind of had more impact on the extremes of your frequency range there. So this is fairly um, like when you're in a real um, acoustic environment where you have many sets of speakers and you would check your mix on all of these different types of environments and, and monitoring options so that you could check that uh, things sound good and check them at low and high volumes as well. Okay, so the next um, part that I want to draw your attention to is this rotate studio here. So by doing this, it's actually like you're uh, facing another way entirely. And this button just resets it back to the middle. So, you know, this isn't particularly useful for for me generally, but this plugin also expands into 5.1 surround sound. So rotating around with 5.1 and doing a 5.1 mix, that might actually be a little bit more useful. Uh, the next um, control here is just an overall output level. So this will just turn it up and down. Okay. And down here we've actually got um, head tracking facilities so this particular plugin is powered by Waves' NX technology which basically is a way to um, track the head movement and change the sound based on where your head is positioned and this can work in a number of ways so at the moment I've got it set to the um, webcam on my iMac here so we can see here with head tracking turned on 
and the module turned on, if I move my head, you can see my head movements is matched by the head tracker. And if I play this, you'll hear the perception change as I move my head around. Okay, so you could hear that there moving around as I moved around. And again, this is not a feature that is particularly useful to me. Um, but again, if you're doing a lot of 5.1 stuff or a film stuff, this could actually be very, very useful when you want uh, to see how uh, things move around. And if you don't have a webcam, uh, you can also get a uh, NX um, Bluetooth headset and you place this on the top of your um, headphones and it basically pairs to the app and then it tracks the movement that way. Um, it also has a bunch of headphone EQ options. So um, for now, there's only a fairly basic list of headphones. Uh, I'm wearing a set of HD 650s, so I'm going to try what they've put in for the HD 600, which is a fairly close model to this one. And the idea of this is it's going to even out the um, frequency spectrum of the headphones themselves in a similar way to other products like Sonarworks. So let's just listen to this turned on and off. And you're going to get the most benefit on this if you're actually listening with HD 650s or another similar brand. So um, Waves have told me that they're going to be adding a lot more headphones to this list very shortly. But for now, there's kind of only, you know, 10 or so different headphone EQs. So that certainly does something to the low end that I like here. It kind of solidifies things. So I'm going to leave that on. And this final section down in the bottom here is all of the features that you can change um, to better model your own head. So some of the things about the um, head related transfer function that they've uh, modeled is that everybody's head is slightly different and the cues given are going to be slightly different. And whilst they can't model the ridges on your ears very well, um, they can give you settings to change the circumference of your head or the um, distance between your ears. And that's going to better model um, your own ears and your own hearing. So it's going to make this even more accurate. So if you want some instructions on how to do that, you can hit this question mark and that will show you how to measure your head. So the final thing I want to go over is actually how I'm going to solve some of the problems that I've heard from the this plugin. So I'm going to turn off the head tracking for now and I'm just going to listen through one more time and start making changes. So I actually feel, despite the fact that I mix this with headphones on, I feel my, like my low end is actually okay. But my reverb choices, on the other hand, are not, and particularly on the lead vocal. So what I want to do is I want to try and make the lead vocal reverb a bit narrower. It seems like really artificially wide and a bit unnatural at the moment. So one of the reasons for this is that I'm using a multibus mixing system. So... All of my reverbs are kind of going to a space bus here. And that space bus has this artificial widener on it. And that's working really well on some of these delay throws. And I've also got some of the backing vocals and other things that I want to appear super wide going to that bus. But it's not doing, you know, a good job on the things that need to seem uh, a little bit more intimate and a little bit like more like a natural room. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, play this and I'm going to take out the vocal room and the large verb here and it will probably end up kind of feeling a little bit of a better mix. Oh, 
So that tightens it up a little bit and therefore I think that I'm going to be best taking these reverbs and not throwing them through this space bus. Okay, so let's now put it through to the bus that's there for the kind of mid-range weight. Okay, so that should bring it in a little bit and let's listen again and maybe I'll just bring the times down a little. So that feels a little bit better already, uh, but I still think we can go a little bit further. So I'm just going to load a stock Pro Tools um, EQ on here, and I'm going to try and EQ out some of the areas that are sticking out to me, where the lead vocal seems to be cluttered by the reverb. And it also seems to have brought out some of the essiness of the vocals. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm just going to put a de on these as well. I'll put it on the uh, lead vocal. And then I might also copy it to some of these reverbs. Because the S's are really kind of seeming quite wide to me. And I don't think they should. Okay, so that feels a bit better, but as the chorus just kicked in there, I noticed that it got a little bit too roomy again. And that's probably because I'm sending this vocal parallel to the vocal room, and that's maybe a little bit too much. So I'm going to kind of back that off and see if that feels better. Okay, so that's all sounding a little bit better now. Um, if this was, uh, you know, going to be released after this, I'd probably spend a little bit more time on the DSing and kind of finding the right frequencies. Uh, but for now, I just want to kind of move on, and I'm just going to listen to this uh, plug-in bypassed and back on. And what I should hopefully have found is that I've fixed a lot of the disparity between the two, so they now feel more similar when it's off to when it's on. And I feel like I could add a little bit more vocal weight now to kind of make it come forward.
Okay, so that's made the vocal seem a little bit better. Um, I'm on near field. Let's see what this feels like on the mains again. Okay, so that overall feels a little bit better now. I've brought the f uh, vocal forward without it sounding too um, reverby and kind of controlled the elements of it that were sticking out when I switched to the Abbey Road Studio 3. So I hope you enjoyed that and hope that that's giving you some ammunition to know what you might want to use this for and what it is good for. If you enjoyed it, please like or subscribe and I'll see you again soon.